Hi everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I've shared with you 10 different techniques on how to make sewing pattern paper look a little bit more interesting. And in that video, which I will link down below, I mentioned that there is going to be a part two in which we actually use these papers to make ephemera and embellishments for our junk journals. And that is today. I've been playing with these papers for a few days now. I had a lot of fun and today I want to share with you what I've already made and I want to make a few things with you together. Okay, let's see what I've made so far. I made some washi tape and I started actually making and I thought I'll just continue with you so I'll show you how I do this. I don't think I've shown you before. Then I made some of these envelopes these are recycled envelopes and pattern paper that i've used on jelly plate are perfect for it because they're thin and i've created this little insert pocket page for the journal i will show you how to do that one as well then with some of them i made little gift bags i think these would be great to put in the journal to put some lace inside if you're going to gift it to someone you can make them larger of course or, or smaller you can also put some buttons here whatever you know that's sewing related and of course i had to make some envelopes we've done this in several videos this is probably just a different size if we have time we'll make one create a little pouch here with this cute little charm I think I want to show you how I've done these charms because they're so easy to make and I think they look really cute. They even have a little sentiment on the back. Then I've done some ruffles and I've used the tissue paper, the pattern paper that's printed on tissue paper. They're perfect for it because they're thin. And the buttons that you see here are actually paper buttons. I used my die cutting machine to cut these from various scraps of paper. You can also cut your own or you can use real buttons. And of course, I had to make some flowers. This is from the waxed one. This is from the tissue. That's the one that I've colored with inks. And here again, the waxed and the tissue paper. Added some uh, brads in the middle to hold it all together. That one was covered with napkin. Then just the one that's painted, again, tissue paper. I just like how they look, they're layered. And I have a video on how to create these flowers. This is the same way as in that video. It's just that I've been using these papers, not the regular scraps, just the papers with the sewing pattern. I think I want to show you how I do the washi tape first. I have here some double-sided tape. They come in different widths this is a bit less than one inch what is it 22 millimeters okay, so i just want to show you how i do this this is so easy i usually just place something heavy here i just grab this just to hold it in place then i take this and i let it hang off the table you probably can't see it but just so you know it's going all the way down and it's actually hanging off the table and it's in my lap. Then I take the paper and I just try to align here. It doesn't matter if you go over and you just do that. I mean, there are many ways to do your own washi tape. For me, this is kind of the easiest. And then what I do, i just push this a bit further up. I take my ruler. You can cut with your scissors as well but for me this is actually easier and i like the uneven edge and i just do this okay. and it's done and then again i move this further up and you just keep going until you make enough And you can do this with napkins, you can do this with fabric, although with fabric you probably wouldn't be able to tear, you would have to tear the fabric beforehand, but you can just cut. It works really well with just papers. 
just do one more. Have here probably for two more strips. I'll just do that. It's great to have these on hand. And we'll try to use some of this tape just so you see how it's actually used as a decoration. Now this one might be a bit more difficult to tear. We'll try. And, that's it. and now I just cut it here. Okay, I'll leave that to make more with something else. I'll just do this. And then we can keep it like that until we're ready to use it. So that was easy, wasn't it? Let's make now some of these little gift bags. I've used here the paper that I've altered with watercolors, but I want to show you how to do it with waxed paper. People tend to ask questions about how to glue waxed paper because when paper is waxed, it's a little bit oily, so regular glue just won't hold it. I've been using this glue, acetone-based glue, and I find that it actually works. Something like E6000 would work. This is F6000. Perhaps this would work, but I haven't tried. This is not straight, but we'll fix it. I fold it. Anyway, you know, something like that. This will depend on the size of your paper. I'm not really worried about the exact size. I make them all in different sizes. And when you fold over here, you have to make sure it covers at least one centimeter here. So that you can glue it and i use these lines as a guide because it wasn't cut straight down the bottom i want to make sure it's not like that or like that i want it straight so i'll just fold like this here and then i'll try to align there with this line i think that's all right so when you add glue you put glue close to this edge and then you put glue close to this edge. That way it's glued well and there's no, shouldn't be any seeping through. And you can tell where the glue is now, can you? But that will dry. Okay. Hold it like this until it dries. This glue dries really fast, so it should work well. Okay, so once it's dry, I just fold this and make a little cut like that, and then I open it up. I like to have the seam or the part where I joined, I want to have that on the back, just like here which means I'm going to fold this end that way. And I don't need too much bulk, so I'm going to fold like this and I'm going to cut off, I'm going to cut off this piece here. Okay. And I don't need that. Okay, so it's something like that. And then here you can do something fun. For example, with these scissors, you can cut like that just so it's kind of fun and then you fold this from end to end all right and then you just add glue and there you go it's probably too much glue but that's all 
All right, that's your bag. You can leave the edge like this or you can straighten it with scissors. I'm going to cut here. I'll use these scissors again. I'll just check if that's straight. Oh yeah, it's close enough. You can also do that fold here and then do it on the side. It's just easier to put things inside and it's easier to open it up. Okay, so there's your little gift bag. Let's quickly make another one. Now we have those two little bags and I've used the stamped image and I stamped on that paper that I painted. You have done this with acrylic paint and I stamped on one. So I just cut that there. So maybe I can use this image. And I'll just try to cut it nicely if possible. Is it good enough? Okay, looks all right, I guess. Yeah, and what do we have here? This is more like a background page. I don't think I want to cut any of these. That also is more like collage paper, but I have this piece left. Maybe I can stamp something for this. Maybe I can stamp this sewing machine for that fit. Tape measure. Or maybe that. I've used brown ink. Maybe I can go with brown here too. That's all right. And I'll just straighten this. I think that's that's good. I've got some fabric pieces and this here comes from that. You know sometimes when you go to one of those furniture stores they give you these so that you can check the dimensions. Obviously I kept one and it's a great thing to use for this here. I'll just cut off this part. Don't need that and maybe I'll this just a little bit of ink around okay let's see what sort of fabric can we use perhaps I can cut some of that I want them to look like these sample fabric pieces I'm just trying to make it look more like a square. I think that'll look nice. Have that and that. And then on this one, I want to use something different than I have the, perhaps that one. Cut it a little bit larger. a little cluster that might look interesting like that okay maybe something like this I don't want it to be the same as there just want to vary it a little bit you can include this and I want something here perhaps a piece of lace would look good and over there I have lots of these paper buttons. Let's see if we have one that's good. I even have one that's cut with the pattern paper. Maybe. You can use the real buttons as well. But I want to avoid that because I don't want it to be too thick. Maybe it wouldn't. 
Okay, we'll use that. Okay, let's see what works well. We have this piece of lace. That might look nice like that. Have this. It's probably too much. Have that. This is from a blouse. So just cut it. one's nice and thin I think that one okay so we just glue that to this and now the glue I'm gonna use this same glue this fabric is quite thick so I don't think it will go through Even if it does a little bit, it doesn't matter. Do this. Perhaps I could ink this button a little bit. It might stand out a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, I've got some of this embroidery thread. Later on, once it's glued, perhaps I can just make a little bow here. Okay, that one is done. I think it's cute. Okay, let's glue that one. I should take a mental picture of this before I take everything apart. Okay, glue that there. I'll just use like a few dots of glue. It's so easy to forget how everything was. If I wasn't recording the video, I would take a photo of it and then take everything off and complete. But I'm using my phone to record this video okay my memory isn't the best some days i think i've got too much on my mind okay that will do set that day and do this here yeah, that would work. And that, maybe I can just add some thread as well. I really love how that looks, so there you go. I think these glassine bags with the waxed pattern paper look really cute love it let's see what else we can make i think i want to make envelopes with these ones that we used napkins and thread because they are a little bit tougher they, they're thicker and i think they would be perfect for envelopes i like this one when i make envelopes like this I use a square piece of paper and this is not square so I would have to square it up so it's nine by nine square let's 
see i've got a five by seven inches template here and i think it works really well so i'll just use that one i need to place that there and align this and because my ruler is a bit shorter i'm going to assume this is about 12 and three quarters but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. I'll just eyeball it and make sure there is enough room on each side. Something like that. And I'm just going to start folding. I've shown you this technique of making envelopes in two other videos. I will link them down below. Perhaps I went into a bit more detail than today. But this is more like a process video than a tutorial. Just do that. Here. Okay, and then I'll just go like this. Cutting off the excess in the corners. Don't have to worry about aston-based glue because this is just paper and napkins. It's not, it hasn't been waxed. Okay. And if you want to ink, it's best if you do it now. Maybe that would look good because it's quite busy. Yes, it does look better, doesn't it? I love making envelopes. would definitely cut it and do it like in two sections. And then, okay. I'm going to use this double fix because it works in fabric and I'll just put a bead use silicone glue here if you have fabric fix or something like that or even just hot glue I like that the white actually made it look a little bit less uh, overwhelming. It just breaks that busyness of it. And that would look good. But I would definitely cut off these parts. Just leave the little rows like that. Maybe I can use a bread. This bread has that look. I think it's just perfect for this. So I'll just punch a hole here, just above this decoration. And I'm gonna go through there. And on this side, I think I should have something here on the back to reinforce. I have this, so I'm just going to punch a hole. I'm going to add some glue here. This is cut from just packaging paper. You know, when you order things online and they sometimes get wrapped in this brown paper. 
So just like that. I think it's cute. I love it, maybe. With the leftover paper, we can make a little pouch like this one. Maybe the bottom can be like this. Just use this. And then the top can be like this. And I'll have to cut that off. See? Because these threads are just loose. The actual napkin that's holding them doesn't go all the way. It goes all the way up to here. So I'll just cut that. I think I want to make something different here. I'll just go like this. I want to ink that. So we'll just glue these two, that's, that's it. Just glue here. We can also take it to the sewing machine. Just like that. And then fold that. I just think that white looks really nice in combination with this paper. I like to put something heavy on the flap here. It just holds it down better. Okay, now I want to show you how to do this. And for that, we will need some envelopes. And I have some used ones here. And for this one, I used envelope that opens on the side like this one. I want to make one that opens at the top like that one. Okay, this one's open. Okay, so we'll do one of each. So what I like to do is fold this, open that up, if possible. If it's a new one, you wouldn't have to, but that's a used one. It doesn't matter that the paper here is a little bit thin and torn. We'll fix that. We'll glue things over fold that like so and then I just take the scissors and I just follow this line here okay. and you have to cut like either like this open it up Maybe I'll just do that just easier and then you have this part that you don't need but that's all right so now I fold it like that okay. I don't press on these things and I decide how deep I want the pockets see here if I if I leave them all the way there it's actually hard to put things in and take them out so I like to go Maybe about there. Okay. So what I do, I just cut that and then like so. Same here. And if it's not straight, we can fix it now. Okay. Doesn't really matter that it's not 
completely straight, trust me. I'm going to fix it later. So I just use that as a guide to fold that part. And that's how you end up with this. Okay. And then it's just a matter of gluing other papers inside, outside, and onto this part. So that's the construction part. Now let's have a look at this one. So you open it up like that. And then you fold it. This is actually a little bit easier. And we use that to, to draw the shape. Okay. And then here you leave a little bit, a little bit like that. Now this part here, to see how it has that there, so I'll just cut it like that. How much was that? About two centimeters. You can even mark just so you don't cut too much. Okay. Two centimeters. And then perhaps it's a good idea to just mark. You don't have to do this, you can leave it deep as it is, but I find it's a bit difficult to put things in and take them out. So I prefer to just cut it. But as long as you don't cut too much, okay? Because you still want that to go over. So that's what it looks like. So that's the construction part for that and that would obviously go into the journal again you have to put the papers on the inside on that part and on that part okay now i really like this pattern paper on the inside so i think i'm gonna go with that on these i just really like that i've used a coffee dyed one i probably need two of these and you don't have to put the paper all the way, just maybe what's visible, okay, and be about halfway there. So even if I use just half of this on each side, that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to use that and I'll have to make that. Cut that in half. Okay, so we have paper for the inside of that one. And then the same thing applies here. You don't have to put it all the way, just about there. this in half okay so that's going to go on the inside so I have that ready okay and for the outside what I did here I used jelly prints I'm going to do the same here are my jelly prints on pattern paper I love this one and that one I want to use that one and that one. So I'm going to fold this in half. It's sort of already showing me where the half is. And then I'm going to fold that in half just to see how much I need to cut. Okay, just approximately there. I'm going to leave about one centimeter. To fold over. Okay. So, 
take that out for now. Okay, and I'm gonna apply glue stick on this side. Just cover everything with the glue nicely. Sometimes it's really nice when you just craft. And not to worry about anything else. Here I'm going to just do a little notch fold first. This is going to be glued here and that has to stay open. This is similar to that tutorial we've done last year where we turned large envelope into a journal cover. I think that's almost the same thing, it's just that we used fabric instead of jelly print in that instance. have a nice neat edge. I'm happy. And we do the same here. Nice. Okay, so we've done the outside. Let that dry. Let's do this one. I have just enough. Okay, so I can cut that and that and this trim that a little bit. Okay. Just do it like that. Cover this with glue stick.
here I'm going to do that but I won't worry about the corners here I have to go in just straight okay I'm gonna go with this first do the same thing just do a straight cut this one I'm just going to do that and then fold that good let's cut here a little bit like that if you you can see this all that I love it okay so now we need to do the insides I like them to be at least one millimeter on the inside so that I can see this on this uh, jelly print that first yeah that fits nice just using glue stick here my hands all covered in glue <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm just going to fold this. Do this. Here we go. Now we have to do something on the front and you can also use jelly prints or you can use whatever paper you like. I want to use this. I'll just see which one works really well. These are from the Lacy Jelly Print collection papers. I've been dying to use them in this project. 
think the pink one would look really nice there. And this one would look good here. Although I've used that one here. So I don't want to repeat myself. What about this one? I've also got this from the Lacy Card Collection. Maybe this one. I will use that one here. Okay. Now with these ones, you have to cut them also like one millimeter from this edge. So if I cut the white part, I will probably have to cut around here. And you have to do the same. And you can leave this top bit as big as it is, or you can just trim it maybe, for example, I don't know, something like that. And then here, it is the same thing. You have to mark. Let me see. Really? That's the right way up, isn't it? So if I want to see this butterfly here, I'll do something like that. I will cut this one. I need a little bit to fold over, so I'm going to cut it like that and here like that and then in this case I'll cut the white part off and I'm going to cut then about there okay I've cut those to the right size I should probably fold it in half I'll just mark this here I'm going to cut this going to be easier to fold over. Oh, I already love it. Again, I'm going to fold in half. And then I need to fold on the inside. Just fold here. I won't press too hard because I make sure it's alright. That they all folded and ready. Just glue them. It's a good idea to do this. And that one is done. Now let's do this one. And then I'm just going to Hold. so you can't see this I'll show you what it looks like in a second but there's no other way to do this <laughs> maybe like this maybe that, that, that's better I think oh I love this one too that jelly print and this which used to be a jelly print it's just that I scanned it in so that I can print many more Love it, love it, love it, love it. I'll just quickly show you how I make these, these charms because it's probably the only thing I have time for. And I have some packaging here, okay? And I've glued this paper on it earlier because I wanted it dry. Now I'm gonna use my circular punch. 
just going to punch some round shapes. Ink that. Let's see if we have some inspirational words. I'm just going to use these. These were part of the freebie for when we were making charms with plastic loyalty cards. Let's pick some buttons and I need some of these. I'll just use the black ones. And you need a larger button and a smaller button. And of course you need to punch a hole on top. I've got some larger buttons and some smaller ones. I'm going to just do this. It's so easy. And then you do this. Okay. I find that larger buttons are also thicker, but that's all right. I'll just do a couple with large ones. Okay, I would probably put eyelets here, either in the middle or on top or on bottom. And here I would put them here. one a little dress there and maybe have something else here I'll use this one and the weight is going to hold the flaps closed okay so you can have some charms there and then what do I have here? I have a dress on that one and I have this on the bottom. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to put a hole there and one there. I'm going to use this gold eyelet. one of these. Let's use this one. That's nice. That one. And what can we have here? I also have some of these. Nice and long. Maybe this one. On the front. Even that washi tape we made would look good. And perhaps then add just that flower. So let's do that. Okay, I'll just cut it here.
Let me remove that. Just open it up like this. Remove that. And then you just glue it. And this tape is much stronger than the regular washi tape. These flowers that are made with leftover pieces of these pattern papers look really good there so i'm going to glue that one i don't need to put the glue all over i can have it like this a little bit 3d that's how i like it okay so that one is done i think it looks nice and then here what can we do here on the front I have that ruffle that I made. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to cut that off. I could move it all the way to the side and we'll have it like this. It's cute. I love making ruffles with tissue paper because it's soft. Do you like what we made? I didn't think I would have this much fun with just ordinary sewing pattern paper. Oh, and I just want to keep going, but I can't because the video is going to be too long. I'm probably going to play later on a little bit more. So we made some envelopes some pouches some little glassine gift bags. We altered some of the envelopes with the jelly prints, decorated them, made a few little charms. I've shown you the flowers that I've done earlier and I've shown you how I make my own washi tape with the double-sided tape. So I have quite a lot of here to add to my journals and I love it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was inspirational for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.